how to use the halftone effect in Affinity Photo. I'm using live filter layers. So the key panel here is View, Studio and Layers. Now you can apply the halftone layer across the entire image. Simply just go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Colours and Halftone. But you can also apply it when you apply it Selection. So it's just applied to that area. And of course you can create all kinds of selections. There's a selection there. And then what you can do, you can go to the Layer menu now and New Layer Filter Layer, Colours and then Halftone. And you can see the effect. Now there's some really odd settings with this. The contrast seems to be locked out. And I'm going to go through that a few times just to show you. You can only access the contrast when it's cosine setting. You can see the half tone there in the layers. There's a number of options. There's screen. You can change that. And that's for monochrome at the moment, the dots you can currently see. And you can change the cell size. You can also, like I say, go to cosine, you can go to round. And that creates a different type of design. But when you've got round set, the contrast is not available. So if I just now go to from cosine to round, you can see the contrast is lost, which is a pity. Anyway, go back to cosine now, and then you can change the contrast. You also notice underneath that you've got grey component and under colour removal and they're unavailable. The only time they're available is when you select the screen type of colour. So you can change the contrast, you can make it hardly very subtle effect or you can push it all the way and get a very sharp cell size, cell effect. Now if you go, go to round, you'll notice the contrast is unavailable. Personally, not really certain why that's the case. But obviously, they coded it in that way. And then you can reduce it down if you want to. So you can see more of the cat. Again, let's say you can't access some controls. You can change the screen angle. So you can move that around. So that's quite nice as well. So you can vary that. There's colour. Now colour is a really nice halftone effect, something more akin to like Photoshop. You've got colour and again you've got cosine and round. So again as soon as you select that you notice that contrast is unavailable. But you go back to contrast, the uh, cosine option. What you can then do is modify the cell size as well as the contrast. Round, you can't. But you can change the grey component and under colour, which is quite nice. Now I'm going to boost those up fairly high so you can see the changes when I change the grey component and under colour. Move that all the way up to the top, and then you'll see more and more black coming in. We'll go the other way. But also, what you can do once you've pushed that all the way up to the top to the max, you can go to the undercolor, and then go there and push that up, and you can see the color vanishing there. So you get very small dots. So you can still vary the con contrast as well. So a range of different, and also you can of course move the screen angle. So you can see there's quite a lot of functionality with this halftone 
effect. You go to round, and you can see the design. And again, the grey and under are still available, so you can still modify those. You can also go to line for the screen. Of course, there, the dot is not available anymore. That would be very surprising if it was. You can reduce the cell size, make it very thin lines. You can still not access the contrast. And that's pretty weird. Why not? So what you can do, you can always go back to, say, like color, change it back to cosine, and then go back to the line. And then weirdly, contrast is available. I think there is a slight issue there. Anyway, so you can reduce that down. So you get hardly any lines at all. Or you can push it all the way up to the max. Perhaps having it about 80% is probably best, but it's up to you, of course, what you want. And exactly the same problem happens actually with the uh, circular as well. If you go into circular and contrast is not available. But you can get contrast back. Of course, you can modify the screen angle as well as the cell size. You also go down to circular. Just before I leave line, you can see to show you the screen angle can be changed. With all these layers and filters, I would love there was if there was a randomization feature. It would be nice to be able to randomize these things. So you could just click a randomize and it would change it. I love to experiment. Also, there's a screen circular effect. Unfortunately, you can't move the origin point of the circle. Now that would be nice. Doesn't appear to be any feature to allow you to move that central bit. Now obviously dot is not available again. If you just go back to color and cosine, and then you can access the contrast again when you go back to circular. It's a very odd feature. Perhaps it'll be updated in a future version. Who knows? Again, obviously, the grey component undercolour is not available. So you can see you can vary that cell size. But of course, weirdly, the screen angle is still accessible. But of course, it has no effect when you're talking circles. So if I rotate that, it doesn't do anything. What you can also do with this, of course, is use blend modes. So you can go down to the bottom, that's the last really major thing here. So you can just go through, you've got dark and multiply, difference, color burn, and so on and so on, as well as, of course, opacity. There's difference there. And that's the same, exactly the same for all of the screen types, as well as the cell size. You can close the live filter layer. Oh, before I, yeah, yeah, close it. And I'm going to deselect that. So select menu and deselect, and then you can go over to the move tool and you can just move it around. Now it's a slightly unusual thing. You can't move it around at this point. But what you can do is go over to the layers panel. Do you think, oh, I can move that around? No, you can't. Go over to the layers and then go to the actual half tone there, select that, and then drag that up above that. And now it's just a standard layer. So you can move it, but it's slightly weird in the sense you end up obviously having the background now. So obviously the effect's been applied to the, it's slightly different from how you'd expect in like Photoshop. But it does create some interesting effects in its own right. And of course, you can still apply, because it's a layer, you can rotate it. 
You can transform it in many ways. You can, I'm just going to squeeze it now, just there. Yeah, just reduce it down in size. And you can see the effect there. And the effect is still available. That's the great thing about live filter layers, is you can go over to the layers panel and you can double click and the panel will reappear. I stopped the video at this point because I accidentally pushed the cell size up to its max and the application fell over. Ho hum. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, and many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. Thank you much.